The ice maker on my Whirlpool fridge recently stopped working. The first thing to try is to make sure your filter has been changed recently. If your filter has been changed recently, then the next culprit is probably one of the water fill valves. Your fridge may have one or maybe two fill valves. I'm going to go ahead and replace the fill valve that's the easiest to get to. It's right on the back side of this fridge. And here's the replacement fill valve. It looks something like this. It has a water line that comes into the top and then a water tube that kind of connects right here on the bottom that goes to your filter. And it just bolts right to the fridge there. It has a wire connector. It's really easy to change. So we're going to replace that fill valve and see if that corrects the problem. There's two ways to go about ordering the right fill valve. One is look at the part number stamped right on the, the fill valve itself or on the data tag of the fill valve. The other way that you can do without having to remove it first is just go to any reputable parts website and look up the model of your refrigerator and order the fill valve that way. To find the model number of your fridge on my Whirlpool, you can open up the doors and look at the top. For me, it's on the left top right here. There's a data tag and the model number is right there, the top number there. It could also be on the left wall or the right wall up near the top. Just kind of look around and you'll find the model number. Let's pull the fridge out and get access to the back. Okay, now that we can get behind the refrigerator, let's go ahead and unplug the unit first. So I'm gonna unplug my fridge. Now we're going to remove the cover at the bottom of your refrigerator. If you have a newer fridge, you'll notice that now the back covers are probably made out of cardboard instead of aluminum like they used to be. Manufacturers are getting cheaper and cheaper. Uh, so mine happens to be cardboard, but whatever the case, just go ahead and remove the screws that hold it in. That's a quarter inch uh, drill driver you can use or a, a socket and a ratchet or a wrench, whatever you have to go ahead and remove the hardware. Okay, now you can pull the cover off and make sure that the water hose comes out of the groove in your cover. If it's cardboard like mine, be careful not to rip it. Now that we have access to the back of the fridge, you'll see some of the components. Right here's our fill valve that the water line's going to. It's really easy to access. If you haven't been in this area in a long time or ever, chances are it'll be full of dust. Um, there is a fan in here that that blows across the components in the refrigerator to keep them cool, keep your refrigerator running efficiently. It's a good idea to get a shop vac or your, or your vacuum cleaner hose and just go ahead and suck out all the dust bunnies that might be in here and clean off the fan a little bit if it's full of dust. Before doing anything with your water line, make sure you turn off the water supply from the wall. So rotate the little valve 90 degrees and it will turn off. Now there will be some water that spills out when you disconnect the line, so let's get a towel handy, a couple of towels. I'm gonna go ahead and put it under here because I know it's gonna leak. And the water line for me, it's a one half inch wrench. So I'm just gonna, it shouldn't be that tight. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove it. There's a little water dripping out there. All right, let's be careful when you're when you're handling the water valve and the, and the water line that goes up to the filter housing. We don't want to damage or crack this hose. And if your refrigerator is pretty old, this could be a little bit brittle. Next step is to go ahead and remove the two little bolts that hold the fill valve onto the fridge. It should be one quarter inch, just like the access panel bolts. Now your fill valve is loose, you'll be able to pull it out a bit. Be careful, don't pull it too far. We don't want to bend this water line too much. There's an electrical connection back here. We can go ahead and remove that. Just grab the kind of groove areas in the back and it should pull right off. And then work it back and forth and it will come off. The original fill valve does have a, a label on the side of it. It does have a part number. It starts with a W. This is the part number that you can look at and just go on something like Amazon or just online and search for that part number. The only thing holding my fill valve on is the water line that goes up to the filter housing. So if you look at your replacement one where the water line goes in, um, you can get an idea of how it works. So you wanna get a hold of the, 
the little plastic clip at the bottom and just push it up. See how that moves? So if you can press up that piece of that plastic clip, it will release the water line. It's almost like an air hose connection if, if you've ever connected a, an air compressor to anything. So and my original one, the plastic piece is blue. So I'm gonna press that up with my fingers and it should release that water line. Just like that. Here's my original valve. That is the part number, the W number. Let's go ahead and install the new valve the same way we removed the old one. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the, get the water line here and just press it in evenly. You press it in pretty firmly until you can't press anymore and then kind of pull it down and you do it, do just a quick test, uh, pull on it gently. It should not come back out of there. Mine is in there pretty firmly. Now is the easiest time to connect the wire back on. So go ahead and press that back into place. Now we can go ahead and reinstall the mounting bolts. I'd say get them started by hand first, and then you can use your drill or your ratchet to tighten them up. Okay, now we can go ahead and reconnect our water line. The new unit probably has a protective cap on it, so go ahead and take that off. Make sure it starts on straight. You don't want to get it started crooked. And then you don't have to get it super tight. Just kind of remember how about how loose it was when you removed it, but just get it snug so that O-ring seats firmly. And go ahead and dry it off a bit for any water that could have leaked out uh, of the of this water line. Okay, now I will slowly turn my water supply valve back on and just make sure that there's no leaks coming from the connection I just made. There it goes. Feels like it's on. All right, so I've got that reconnected, mounted back in. My water's back on. I don't have any leaks. Go ahead and fill around your, your refrigerator here and make sure there's nothing leaking. I'm gonna go ahead and refit my access cover. Make sure the grooves go around the water lines. Can't believe they make this out of cardboard now. That's it, and let's get the screws restarted. Again, these don't have to be very tight. All we're doing is snugging them up. Double check, wait a few minutes, you know, use the water a couple times. And then get a flashlight and kind of look at the water fill valve. Just make sure it's not leaking anywhere before you call it a, a done deal. And hopefully changing out that fill valve will fix your ice maker problems. For me, it did. I've, it's now the next morning and I've got a load of ice in there now. So that did my trick. Um, if that did not fix your problem, there actually is another fill valve. It's called a secondary fill valve. And it goes, uh, it's after the filter. So the one we just replaced sends water to the filter housing. Uh, your filter is up in the ceiling of your fridge here. And from the filter, the water then goes into a reservoir and then to another fill valve that basically sends water to either the ice maker or the water dispenser. And it's pretty similar to the one we just replaced and it is it is easy to, to replace. It's just a little more challenge to get into the ceiling of your refrigerator there. And you can find that uh, a drawing of that on any of the parts websites, but I would try that as a second option if uh, if your ice maker is is mechanically working but just not producing ice. And that's really it. It's really very simple to change your water valve out 
And hopefully this video helped you all out and hopefully it fixes your ice maker problems or any other problems you might have with your water supply out of the refrigerator. So give me a thumbs up if this helped you out and thanks for tuning into my channel. Follow for more useful tips.